In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the Paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand and once more had me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again, he measured off a thousand and had me wade. The water was up to my waist. Once more, he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river, I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the sea the salt waters which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore, we fear not, though the earth be shaken and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. 
The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A clean heart create for me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill blind, lame, and crippled. One was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets up, gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. And this beautiful image of Jesus, this beautiful story of Jesus healing this man who had been ill for a long time, 38 years. And there's something wonderful to, just to to notice in this engagement that Jesus has with this man. Do you want to be well, is the question he asks of this man. Of course, at other times in the Gospels, he asks, what do you want of me? And of course, remember that one response, I want, I want to see. And you might expect this man to respond, I want to be healed. But he, in a way, he answers it, but he doesn't answer it quite so directly. He says, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, while, uh, while I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Of course, there's a lot of compassion there, but, but what do we see? But we, we see him, in a way, blaming other people. No one else is taking me down. And this, this is my situation. I can't get out of it. And of course, in a, in a way, we look at this person. Yeah, he's, he's weak. He's got nothing. Uh, no one to take him down to the pool, so he's, he's very, very poor in that way. But we could see, in a way, ourselves in that too. You know, the, those excuses that we make for ourselves, how we, those ways that we blame other people for our own, our, our, our own maladies or for the situations that we place ourselves in. And so Jesus approaches this man, of course, he approaches us with his own vision of what is real. When, of course, to say the vision is not quite right, but to see his will, to see what, what he really desires, how Jesus views this man, not as ill. He simply says, rise, 
take up your mat and walk. And that we're meant to allow ourselves to be there so that as we are caught up in Jesus' story, not our own stories of how, of how we have been affected, but how the Lord now sees us, how when he encounters us, how does the Lord see us? You know, may, it may be those very words, rise, take up your mat and walk. We're meant to, and I, I love that, that phrase, take up your mat. Part of my prayer today was just wondering, why, why take up your mat? And part of the reason is so that this man will not go back to that place. He's taking up his mat because he no longer has a place here at the, at this, in these porticos, in this, in this Bethesda, in this pool here. His place now is somewhere else. Someone else has to take that place. He's no longer left for there. Now he has been touched by the Lord. Now he is a part of the Lord's story. And where we, of course, as Christians... Catholics are meant to be drawn into the Lord's story more and more. As reflecting this morning, we, we are so, our lives have been placed so inextricably, they are now so inextricably linked to the Lord through the grace of our baptism. We cannot interpret our lives apart from Him. So any of those other ways, those, those other thoughts that come in, those self-denigrating thoughts or those, lo those thoughts of tell us of how victims we are or what, whatever it is that comes into our life. We, we have been touched by the Lord. Our lives are only make sense, they only make sense in Him through the grace of our baptism, through the grace that we are experiencing today, the Lord really entering into our life. That's who we are. People who have been touched by God, raised up in Him, no matter what goes on, no matter what the circumstance we experience, we are people who have been touched by the Lord. Let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. May God continue to bless him with strength and courage for his world, worldwide shepherding of souls. We pray to the Lord. For all of those responsible for public policy, may God guide them. May they be given deep wisdom, especially in following after the, the laws of God. We pray to the Lord. For those suffering from illness of any kind, may the healing and peace of Christ come upon them and give them strength. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of us gathered here that we may have our, our, the grace of our own baptism renewed for us throughout the season and finally at Easter. We pray to the Lord. For all of those who have died, especially for Donald Dean Chinander, for whom this Mass is being offered, May they soon experience the joy of eternal life with God. We pray to the Lord. God of all compassion, we come to you with complete trust. Please hear our prayers, we ask, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as creator, for this our mortal life, and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, He took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race, Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. 
Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament that we may find for our bodies now and likewise in times to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.